What's going on everybody? I'm Terrence and this is Bank Ship. Oh man, it feels good to be back. You guys don't know how good it feels to actually really be back. You know, I posted a video, I think it was last week or something. Um, that was an older video. I actually still have one older video going around somewhere. I don't I don't know where the scan disc is, like the SD card is. Uh, gotta track that down so I can actually edit it and put it out there. But as far as actually making new footage, it feels really, really good. Uh, finally broke down, got me a new GoPro, decided I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Uh, at least to let you all know that I'm back, you know, everything's still going good. And just kind of give a little update of where things are going, where I've been, all that good stuff. Um, as you guys can see, first things first, <laughs> I got a speaker. No more hole. Um, it wasn't that big, like it didn't bother me a lot. Um, but my speaker over on that side went out, so I had no, no speaker, no music. I can't ride with no music. So, had to end up getting new speakers. Um, couldn't find one uh, that actually fit in the square box that used to be up here. Um, and plus, one of the square covers that I had were bro was broken anyway. So I just went ahead and got round ones, called it a day. You know, it, it works, looks fine, they work great. So I'm not worried about it. A um, Lot of other things, just got back from uh, preloading for in the morning but uh let the old girl cool down and everything but a lot of other things uh that has happened since my last video um as you guys can see fenders no fenders um not to the fault of the fender at all like it had been you know with the bolt breaking and all that stuff well, i mean the bolt broke but what I ended up doing, I did a whole bunch of stuff. I took the, uh, gotta stand over here in the shade because it's hot. But uh, I ended up taking the bolt that goes into the uh, the part where the, the fender bracket, the post, that's the word I'm trying to think of. So I ended up welding the bolt to the post. That way I didn't have a problem with that bolt spinning inside of the po post which loosened the nut which eventually allowed the bolt to vibrate and then break that's how i kept that's how they kept breaking um so I, you know i couldn't weld the post to the frame of the truck because that would be a non-factory weld that's a big no-no mr dot man wouldn't like that so i welded the bolt to the post put the post in the bolt in the hole put loctite on it tightened it up and then i drilled a hole well i had a uh we drilled a hole into the actual mount that slides over the post and then did a little tack weld um on the bracket and the post that way nothing could move so i had that for about i don't know two weeks three weeks something like that and it was working great and then i was on 287 uh in jersey and it was pouring down rain and everybody was slamming on their brakes so i'm slowing down uh everybody was slamming on their brakes because there was a tire tread huge tire tread in the middle of the road um i slowed down it wasn't in my lane i slowed down well a fedex truck decided that he was not going to slow down at all and he wasn't going to try to dodge that tire tread at all either um so he ran directly over it and it actually threw the tire tread right into my fender and took the fender completely off and then after that the tire tread flew back and smacked some lady's car uh the lady actually flagged me down because she was trying to say that i had to pay for her mirror that was broken off but that wasn't my tire tread to begin with and also it's road debris so i'm not responsible anyway so she didn't want to hear that but you know it is what it is i could have gave her my insurance information and they would have told her the same thing but why give my insurance information if it wasn't mine to begin with and i don't need a claim or a, a proposed claim none of that so um but that's that so fender's gone i actually had an issue 
um, with my mud flaps, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a lot of issues. I haven't seen you guys in a while, so uh, bear with me. <laughs> um, but so my mud flaps used to be hung by chains, okay. Um, and when I bought this, you know, when I got the trailer, it only had rear mud flaps, and I ended up putting chains on, you know, in between, so that I had two sets of mud flaps on each side behind each axle. Um, so when I put these mud flaps on, I put the weights on. Sometimes they would swing a little bit um well they started swinging too much um and what happened was going up 95 in jersey jersey seems to be the running theme in this thing um rough roads i guess but going up jersey up turnpike um i hit i guess from the potholes and you know the rough roads the mud flap got stuck up top of the tire so no biggie i could just kick it back off well uh what ended up happening was is the mud flap weight since it was stuck up on top of the tire it actually rubbed against my airbag so it blew my airbag um luckily I had a load of tractor supply trailers, so I was going to a tractor supply to stay that night. So I did a little temporary fix. Believe it or not, I took a tire plug because it was a small hole. Didn't think it was gonna work, but I took a tire plug, like the little rubber plug, you know, you put in the little plunger and you clean it off and you poke it in and you know, put your sealant on or whatever and then cut it, you know. If you know how to plug a tire, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I didn't think it was gonna work, but that was all I had at the time. So I tried it and it actually got me about 60, 60 couple miles uh, beforehand, uh, before it like started letting loose. Uh, so that was enough to basically get me to the tractor supply. Um, and the, you know, the bag actually held air. Once I got to the tractor supply, it started leaking to where there was really nothing I could do uh, to keep that, the air in that bag. Um, so, you know, of course that just means my compressor and the trailer is just going to keep running, running, running. Didn't want to burn up my compressor. Uh, so, you know, what I did is, you know, those lines are just quick connect. So I disconnected. I was able to go and track the supply and get a couple fittings to kind of do some male to males and, and put a female on. I actually put a drain valve on there and just kept the drain valve shut since they didn't actually have a plug. Um, kept the drain valve shut and, uh, was able to get my load off. Um, I actually had two stops uh but they weren't very far from each other but of course i was still in jersey uh but i was able to um get my load off and let my trailer back home um and then buy a new bag uh that bag wasn't cheap either uh but was able to get the bag back on and then instead of so, so i don't didn't have that problem again or would never have that problem again um i ended up taking the chains off of like the mud flaps off the chains i cut the chains from um from underneath the trailer and just welded angle iron underneath there um so that they're you know pretty stiff they don't they don't uh i don't know if y'all can really see it but they don't really move that much you know i mean these things when they had the uh when i had the chains i mean these things would just i mean they'd be swaying like like crazy uh but now they really don't move that much so i haven't had any more problems with it so oh let's see what else I'm trying to think what else i've done to this thing um oh i mean the big stuff well i still got some little stuff had a light out uh on the sleeper so i ended up putting i had these at the house so i ended up putting these uh watermelon lights on there a little bit of an old school vibe um gotta talk a little louder up here because the truck's still on um but these are new um the other week i don't really know how it happened i was turning i guess i clipped something uh and it actually caught my headlight uh and it broke the headlight pedestal like the bracket that the headlight actually sets on so i had to buy two more i had to buy a new one of those when i got them in they were supposed to be oem replacement when i got them they weren't the same as what the oem were um so i had to replace both of them which is fine because i had i got two you know anyway they came as a pair um so you know replace that replace the headlight bezels the lights but the biggest thing up here is the radiator. Um, I know on the last couple videos I talked about, um, you know, my radiator was leaking. Um, so I finally got that put in along with when I did the radiator, 
uh, did the charge air cooler, the condenser. Um, what else? Let's see. Since the radiator was out, I went ahead and did the um, all the seals on the front cover. You know, did the front cover seal and, and everything sealed up the front. Um, and since I sealed up the front, I was like, yeah, I might as well go seal up the back, you know, because I had a leak from the rear main uh, starting. So I went ahead, did the uh, rear main. And I was like, well, if I'm going to do the rear main, might as well put a clutch in. So I put a clutch in um, and then put U joints in the drive shaft. So that's pretty much the nitty gritty of everything I've done uh, to the truck and to the trailer, maintenance wise, repair wise, and all that stuff uh, since my last video. Now, the thing that sucks about it is when I did all that, I decided I was gonna do all of it right away. You know, the radiator, all that stuff, put the truck down for a couple days, get it all done. Uh, that way I'd be ready for flatbed season. Hopefully nothing else would be wrong. Um, well, when I did that, diesel was 252 a gallon here in Virginia. My truck was in the shop for four days, and when I got it out, diesel was over six dollars a gallon in Virginia. So, you know, you want to talk about something that I wasn't prepared for or something that's hard to come back from. You know, when you just go ahead and drop, you know, I dropped almost 20 grand on all that stuff, thinking that uh flatbed season's about to boom, I'll make it back in a you know couple months call it a day but then you come back out and diesel has tripled uh and rates were very slowly catching up to the diesel prices uh that makes it hard um so but you know that's part of it you know you just got to grind and, and budget and and make sure that you put as much back as you can to get that rainy day fund back up that maintenance fund back up and everything like that but i ain't saying it ain't hard and i ain't saying it don't suck um but you just kind of got to go with the flow so that's pretty much where I've been, you know, a lot of family stuff going on, sports and all that stuff with the kids. Um, but now school's almost out, things are winding down. So now I have time to actually make videos and edit videos. I mean, before it was get out the truck, jump in the car, go to a sporting event or go to whatever event it was for the kids. Um, so now that that's dwindling down, I got some more time uh, to make some videos. And for me, it's a good thing that I got time to make some videos because, boy, do we have a lot to talk about. I ain't going to go through everything right now. You know, there's a lot of a lot of different subjects that, of course, I can't just pile into one video. I mean, I could, but it'd be like a two hour video. Rather not do that, of course. Um, but, you know, fuel prices going up, you know, how that affects the industry and stuff like that. You know, I'm gonna make a video on that. I'm sure plenty of other people made a video on that, but I'm gonna make one on it too since I'm a little late back to the ball game. Um, but one thing I will say on this video, you know, just real, I'm gonna try not to spend a lot of time on it. Y'all know I can try to, you know, get long-winded sometimes. Um, but let's call a spade a spade. Uh, it's like, I don't know how many months it's been since I made a video uh but in those months that i've been gone i still watch youtube and stuff like that and other so forms of social media still watch new guys coming in making youtube channels and stuff like that um and man there's a lot of misguided folk out here a lot of misguided folk out here and y'all know me i've been saying it from the beginning this is what you get when people get out here and don't know what they're doing. It's the blind leading the blind. That, you know, that's that's all it boils down to. It is the blind leading the blind. People get on social media, YouTube, TikTok, all that stuff. Talk about how much money they make. Everybody jumps into business because they think they're going to get a lot of money. And what do they do? They help destroy rates. You know, uh, they put worse names out there for hot shots. And then a lot of guys are like, you know what? Hot shot ain't for me. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't make as much money as I thought I was going to do. So I'm going to jump into a semi. So now what do we have? A bunch of people that came from hot shot not knowing what they're doing, jumping up into a semi not knowing what they're doing. Just it, it, it doesn't, cor you know, it correlates. The same way that you run a hot shot can be the same way that you run a truck, a semi. But it's got to be the right way. Aim to, you know, for me and for a lot of people, there's not much that changes between hot shot and semi. 
you got to pay a little more money in fuel maybe have to pay a little more money in maintenance you got your heavy vehicle use tax stuff like that but the the bottom premises of it your rates and things like that is the same negotiating rates and all that is the same so if you don't have those skills in hot shot nothing's going to change in a semi you know people get it in their mind that they that they're going to be able to to make more money in a semi because they can haul more weight or they have more more deck space or more availability or whatever they think but they still bring that mentality of not really knowing how to run a business and then they're like oh now i gotta sell my semi because my business is still going under i don't I, it's still going under i don't know what happened well i can tell you what happened you weren't a good businessman and you didn't perfect your craft before you tried to jump into something else that you still didn't know what you were doing and i blame a lot of social media people for that you know i i watched the video um i'll put a link in the description um you know if you guys don't know who he is but i watched the video from load miser uh you know i like a lot of his videos you know i i, I feel like me and him got a lot of in common because we keep it real um you know we, we tell it like it is so you know he's got a, a a video on there about uh hot shot benny now y'all know me i try to stay out of the drama and stuff like that and not name names and, and and all that and call people out but it is what it is um you know he made a video on it and i could not agree more with what low miser was saying uh you know he's talking about he basically I'll give you a, a snapshot of it, of Low Miser's video. You can go watch it if you'd like. Uh, but he basically has one of Hot Shot Benny's videos on there. And he's going like play by play on some of the things Hot Shot Benny is talking about uh, while he's going through an inspection uh, where he was put out of service. Um, and then he goes and goes through their safer score uh, and shows where they have been put out of service, whether it's a vehicle or driver. Uh, all their violations, their out of service percentage is higher than the national average for uh, both vehicle and drivers um, and stuff like that. And, and you know, all right, sorry about that. Uh, GoPro actually turned off because it got too hot, which is crazy because I'm standing in the shade. That just shows you how hot it is. Speaking of, of how hot it is, uh, before I get back on that other subject, uh, one of the things that I found was wrong you know last summer i didn't have no ac because my fan motor broke well you know my fan motor's fixed now well now i have no ac because i have a leak somewhere so i gotta track that down so it's been super hot i mean i can see by the sweat on my hat um but anyway back to what i was talking about um you know i'll make it quick because i don't want this thing to get hot again cut off on me all that good stuff um you know but low miser great you know he put out a great video did a lot of talking about things, share a lot of the same uh, sentiments, aspects of the game that he does. Uh, you know, there is a huge difference between entertainment and education. Um, you know, yes, entertainment can be educational and educational can be entertainment, but it's a fine line. And y'all know me, I've said it from the beginning, you gotta watch who you get your information from. You know, it's, it, it's, pretty plain and simple to see some of these youtubers and a lot of them may be new guys some of them are old guys um a lot of them are just misinformed and, and and they're taking that misinformation and they're putting that out in their videos and people are taking that at face value and then jumping into business you know that does nothing but hurt not one the industry but hurt those people who are getting in the business not knowing what they were doing because they were following false guidance um, you know, I've said from the beginning, I don't want to be like that. I'm not going to give you any information to steer you wrong because I don't want nobody failing because of what I said. You know, um, I'm only going to tell you things that I know for sure. If I don't know something, I'll look it up, you know, that type of stuff. But I'm not going to be out here giving you, you know, misinformation and just talking out the side of my neck for views. Just ain't going to do it. And when, you, when you're you thinking about getting in this business, you got to watch who you're watching. You know, you got you to gotta be able to di differentiate whether that's going to be entertainment or that really is educational. It could be both, but you just have to watch yourself because you don't want to get yourself in trouble following somebody else that doesn't really know the business themselves. You know, 
I'll be the first to say it. Benny's got some great videos. Very, very, very good videos. I, I mean, I, I think they, he offers a lot of entertainment in his videos, but he also gives a lot of misguided information. I mean, looking at their safer score, I went and looked at it myself um, by some of the violations and even that video that Loadmiser was talking about. Um, when you look at something like that, ask yourself, do you really want to take guidance from that type of person uh, or, or that type of company or anybody who has that many violations? Now, I understand violations are going to happen. Sometimes you get a trooper that had a bad day and he's just looking for something. You know, there are, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's really hard to go your entire trucking career without a single violation because you can get a violation for anything like where's one at here's one one of them little marker lights being out if they want they can give you a violation for it you know but coming from somebody who's been in this business for a decent amount of time and has had zero violations in on the vehicle whether that was my dually or this and zero driver violations now i'm not saying i'm perfect and i'm not saying that if i got a dot inspection today that i might not get a violation things do happen but i can assure you that i'm not going to get a violation on my drivers my you know me myself on my logs my medical card none of that stuff i'm not going to get a violation on tires i'm not going to get a violation on lights i'm not going to get a violation on none of that external stuff you know one of the things he was talking about the breakaway you know like that thing up there i don't know if y'all can see it but i actually just got a new one because the light first indicator was the light wouldn't come on the charging light or the test light wouldn't come on the brakes would activate every once in a while if i pulled the brake away they would activate sometimes sometimes they wouldn't activate so i took it apart it was actually the circuit board that was going bad so i replaced it those are things you find on your pre-trip so somebody who can't really pre-trip do you really want to take advice from them? that's that's all i'm saying i'm not saying you can't take no advice from them but you got to kind of take it at face value to protect yourself if you're trying to get in this business and you're watching some of these guys i mean they're talking about rates uh, I ain't even gonna get into it. I'll leave most of that stuff for another video. But anyway, I just wanted to let y'all know where I've been, where I'm going. We still running this thing. It's actually been, uh, let's see, I think two weeks ago was a year uh, that I've had this whole setup on the road. Uh, so there will be, you know, some videos coming out where I talk about uh, basically reviewing. Uh, I'll review uh, one year for the, uh, the SDX 216 from Diamond C. Um, I'll review the 86 359 uh single axle um you know I'll, I'll review you know how things have changed going from a pickup to a semi uh after a year uh so all those things in the work i'm glad i'm back i'm glad i can see you guys um if you guys got any video ideas or you guys got any questions about things uh you know about me or the setup or anything the business uh or the industry while i've been gone um if you got any questions like that feel free to leave them down in the comments and as always i could not wait to say this i missed saying this as always stay prayed up grind hard and stay humble so I thought I was going to end the video there. I made that video yesterday. Um, and crazy how things happen. Here it is the next day. Um, and I dropped my load off this morning. I go back to my customer to pick up. And, uh, you know, lo and behold, I'm going to check in and I walk back out. And who do I see? I see Benny and Pops. You know, they're uh, at where I get loaded at grabbing a load going uh going up north um so i sat down walked over there you know after i checked in and everything they were in the bay the same bay that i use because they only have one step deck bay so they were in the same bay so i had to wait on them to get loaded so that i could get loaded and uh so i went over there and chopped it up um didn't have my camera with me i had left it in my car um so i couldn't you know take no footage or anything while i was at my customer uh, but Benny did, so I'm not exactly sure when that'll come out, but, um, you know, we 
had a nice talk. Um, you know, we sat there for about 35, 45 minutes or so, uh, just talking while we were getting loaded. And then, uh, you know, they got their load, they pulled out, they had to uh, strap and then back back in the bay uh, to get tarp. So I was able to back in, get loaded. I got strapped down, of course, I have no tarp. Um, and so since I had no tarp and I had nothing to do today and it was kind of pretty early, um, you know, I went over and helped them uh, tarp their load, you know, so that they could get out of there. Um, but it's just so crazy how things happen um, because yesterday I was just talking about the video that Low Miser posted, you know, and of course talked about I was going to leave the link down in the description so you can guys can go watch it yourself, um, you know, and I told you all that I agree with Low Miser, uh, Low Miser um, mainly because I kind of share those same views you know i've said it for a while i said it you'll see it in the beginning of this video where i say it um about you got to watch who you watch who you take information from and things like that um and i'll be 100 percent honest with you guys right now I, like i said i try to keep it as real as possible um i took benny wrong um and the reason i say that is because after we talked we talked a lot about the entertainment aspect and the information aspect um, that's neither here nor there whether or not you want to get information from them you know I know I said something about uh, you know would you want to take information from somebody who has that many violations uh, something along that lines I don't remember exactly what I said uh, yesterday but that still holds true for everybody that's just a blanket statement you know I even told Benny and Pops that that's a, a, a blanket statement for everybody you know you just have to watch where you get your information from and make sure that it's reliable information that's no shade or nothing like that at anybody but well I what I will say is Benny and Pops are both stand-up guys this is the first time I've ever met them and we talked like we see each other all the time you know um, the conversation was very fluid we talked about a lot of things uh, you know we talked about rates we talked about different ways to do things we talked about the industry all types of stuff and the thing that I loved the most was Benny when we were talking owned up to his mistakes you know um, he was talking about the ball tire and stuff like that off of his video, um, you know, and, and the, the bad inspections and things like that he's, that he's had in the past, uh, you know, and he told me straight up, he was like, look, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. That's on me. I gotta do better. I'm going to strive to do better. So those things right there go a long way in my book because there's, like I told him, there's two types of people in this world. There's people who hear the negative and they stay negative. Or there's people who hear the negative and they turn that, turn that around into a positive. Benny has heard the negative. He's heard what he's done wrong. He's seen what he's done wrong. People are making videos, comments, all that stuff. He's seen it and he's recognized it and now he's ready to turn it around. You know, one of the things I said, you know, hot shot is one thing, being in a semi is completely different. Um, you know, you don't want to go through those same mistakes or have that same mentality when driving an 80,000 pounds vehicle versus a 30, 40,000 pound vehicle. You know, it does make a big difference and you can hurt a whole lot more people. Uh, and, and he's aware of that. So hats off to both Benny, especially Benny for owning up to his mistakes. Uh, and of course, hats off to Pops, man. Pops is just a stand up dude, uh, real, you know, real dude, you know, I, and that's what I like. And, you know, that's the same thing I told them, you know, just chopping it up, kicking it while we getting loaded. That's what trucking supposed to be. You know, me helping them out with the tarps and stuff like that. You know, that's just me. That's that's I, I look at it as a brotherhood. If I got time to help somebody, I'm going to help them. You know, it's the same. I've helped people back up. I've jumped in their truck and backed it up before. Um, you know, that's just me. You know, and I think that's how everybody should be in this industry. You know, you learn from your mistakes, you grow from your mistakes. Like I told Benny, it's very few people that jump into this business and know everything that they're doing. You know, people are gonna mess up. You don't, a lot of people don't just jump in the truck and know everything. You never gonna know any, everything. You know, there's always a spot you gotta learn, but it is a dual-edged sword because you're driving a bigger vehicle. You don't wanna find out some mistakes the hard way. Um, you know, and, and I think Benny realizes that and you know, now he's 
ready to fix those things you know so we linked up i gave him my number told him if he ever had questions uh or anything you know or even just driving down the road ain't got nobody to talk to hit my phone i'll chop it up you know it's not it, it, it's nothing you know right? and that's for anybody you know people send me messages on facebook instagram uh you know some people have my number and stuff or they find my number and they text me and that's one thing you can probably ask anybody that sent me a message on any form of media or my phone i respond you know i may not give you the answer that you want to hear but i do my best to respond because the way i look at it is if a bunch of people are going to be jumping into this business i'd rather them jump into this business knowing what's going on or at least having a good idea of what's going on so i think the more people that have that attitude on social media uh you know and, and and be more educational and help people i think it'll be a whole lot better industry as a whole um you know so i just wanted to throw that out there before i put this video on since everything happened so close you know so forget what i said yesterday well not forget what i said yesterday about the end of the video i'll just do it again as always stay prayed up grind hard and stay humble. Mm -hmm.